So now what we want to do is we want to render our model, a wireframe of our model, and we're going to use that wireframe. There's two purposes that we want to use the wireframe for. One is that we want to use it as um, a guide to take our photographs from, and the other one is we want to actually use it as a, uh, within Photoshop uh, so that we can actually, as a guide, in order for us to actually place all our photographs and elements in the correct position. Okay. Now the first thing to consider when we're uh, creating a wireframe is uh, uh, what resolution are we going to create the mat at? Okay, so that might seem like a, an unusual question, but if we create the mat at HD, so let's say we're going to produce this shot in HD and we create the mat in HD, okay, what's going to happen is, uh, I'm just going to go to my animated camera here, so that's camera one, as we push in, so I've got this mat here and as I push in, as I move forward to my scene, all these elements are going to, uh, you know, all these textures and all these elements here are going to uh, are going are coming towards the camera. So that means by the time I've pushed in, the actual resolution I'm getting here is going to be less than HD. So I need to I need to be over HD res to begin with with my texture when I'm projecting it in order for it to work at this point uh, when I'm sort of pushed as I've pushed in. Okay. Uh, when my camera is closer to these objects okay and then the other thing that I, I typically like to do as well is when I'm creating a mat what I like to do is, is kind of over res it so that uh, you, when you over res things it means you can really get away with like little little kind of mistakes little issues in the mat uh, and then and then when you actually down res it for the production um, and uh, it, it looks much nicer so over resing is quite a good technique to use so for this scene what I want to do is I actually want to create the mat at double HD resolution okay so I'm going to go into my settings and I'm just going to basically go into my resolution here and just double it the key thing is when you're the key thing is you need to keep the same aspect ratio if you don't keep the same aspect ratio then what will happen is you're not capturing you know you're not going to be capturing the correct uh, you, you might be in danger of not capturing or rendering out the whole scene that you need to create the matte paint for and then you'll create problems later. So the key thing is to keep the aspect ratio consistent. So I'm going to use my calculator and what I'm going to do is simply copy and paste so I'm going to go into here and paste my um, value in here and then just times it by two and then I should be able to just go control C and then control V it back into there. There we go. And same with this value here. Control V, paste it in, multiply it by two, and then control C and control V. Okay. So that's my double HD uh, setting done. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to close that. I, I will need to go back to that in a moment. Okay. Now, in order to set up my. Um, my wireframe render, uh, keep in mind, again, as I mentioned, we've got two uses for our wireframe here. One is to take the photographs uh, as a guide for taking the photographs, and one is as a guide in Photoshop. Now, in Photoshop, what we want to do, I'm just going to pull up this, the mat I've been working on in Photoshop for you, so you can kind of see that. So, yeah, for, so this is the mat in Photoshop, and what you'll see is, is I'm using a like pink version of the wireframes as a guide here and the key thing is by outputting as pink obviously it then contrasts really nicely against anything that I'm doing in my matte painting assuming I haven't got lots of pink in my matte painting which typically wouldn't be the case um, so I'm outputting I'm going to output a pink wireframe to support this but then what I want is a black and white wireframe or a, 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 so a, a, and keep in mind that this is sorry this is a pink wireframe if I just go uh, to switch this to normal, this is a pink wireframe. So a white, uh, a pink wireframe on a white background, and I've just used the multiply blend to uh, allow it to kind of uh, 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 work in this way. Okay, um, um, but uh, so that's the pink one. Uh, and then what I've done is I've, um, and then for my photographs, what I want is a thick black wireframe on a white background, okay? So, uh, yeah, let's go into here, okay? Uh, so let's let's produce the pink wireframe first. So what I want to do is um, 
my base model is in grey, and I want to I want to keep this sort of grey version because I might want to use that for other things. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new render layer. So I want to go into my channel box here, go into the render tab. I'm going to go right click, or in fact, I don't want to right click. I'm going to go into my perspective view now, and what I want to do is select my whole scene here and create a new. Um, uh, create a new render layer okay and basically what the render layer allows me to do is create a different version of my scene with different materials I've applied and different render settings if I need it okay so in this case what I'm going to do is go into my uh, this layer I'm going to call it wireframe just so we know what we're doing and then what I want to do is again make sure everything in my scene is, is selected I'm going to go right click and I'm going to go assign a new material and so I'm going to create a material to kind of support my my to to uh, to support my wireframe here. So I'm going to use a surface shader, okay. And then what I want to do is uh, I then want to go into the attributes. Uh, so I want to go into the material. So at the moment it's not. Um, uh, yeah, so at the moment it, it it hasn't actually selected the material attributes. So what I want to do is just go right click and go uh, material attributes okay and now what I'm doing is I'm looking at this surface shader that I've just created and applied to 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 my model here okay now surface shader all the surface shader does is it ignores any light any reflections anything like that it just makes the whole thing the same color so in fact it it almost looks like 2d because everything there is no shading or anything like that with a surface shader okay now what we want to do is I want to go into my surface shader 2SG or my or uh, whatever yeah my surface shader SG tab here and then what I um and then if I go into my mental ray settings I can go into here and I can click on enable contour rendering I can select a color I want this to be bright pink okay uh, make sure the saturation is turned up okay so I've got pink hang on where have I gone Let's just go back into there. Um, so I've got that. And then what I want to do is set the width of my line. So I'm going to keep that fairly thin. Say, let's say just one. OK. Um, and that's all the settings that I need to do in there. Now what I need to do is I need to go into back into my re main render settings to set this up to support render, uh, rendering the contours. OK. So what I'm going to do or rendering the wireframe. So what I want to do now is go into... Um, uh, uh, make sure that I'm using mental ray as my renderer and then what I want to do is go into features and down here right at the bottom there's a feature called contour okay now I've already switched this on so you want to switch that on switch on hide surface so what this will do is basically any any anything that's actually rendered as a material will be overwritten uh, and then the, and, and then we can flood the rest of the scene with a flat color and in this case we want white so I've just selected white as my background color okay so we'll just have the pink contours on top of the white background color this setting here is for oversampling now for our application right now we don't need a particularly high oversampling um, and in fact 16 is probably a bit too high but obviously if you were rendering this out for production purposes you want a wireframe for production purposes you might want to increase this so that this is just the oversampling for your to support anti-aliasing so you've got sort of nicer looking uh, uh, wireframe render okay so I'm happy with all those settings and then what I want to do is simply go to my uh, panels I want to go into my camera projector now okay so I'm, I'm, it's the camera projector I want to render this from not camera one my camera projector and then what I want to do because it's 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 going to be this perspective that I'm actually going to be projecting from so I need the wireframe to represent the perspective that I'm projecting from okay so I want to render using the camera projector and then I'll just click render okay uh, I shall pause it while it does the render okay and now we've got the sort of resulting render here and then all I need to do is go file and just save the image as a TIFF okay just save it as a TIFF format and then I can bring that in Photoshop and start using this as a guide to do my matte painting now obviously if I want to do my thick black frame all I've got to do is simply adjust the settings so if I just go into Windows uh, render settings hyper shades that, that allows you to access all the materials and shaders that we've created uh, it's just opened the hyper shade window in my other uh, other monitor here so I'm just bringing it in 
Uh, here is shader 2 is what we were working on so if I click on that and do my graph input outputs here okay uh, I can go back into my surface shader 2 SG settings here and I can obviously just change this color to black and I can change this width to make it thicker okay and then all I need to do is just perform another render again I shall pause okay so this is the render with my thick black lines there and, and now um, and and I could either print this onto an acetate so that I can so basically what I want is a I want this on a transparency in order to to help me with my photographs I could either print this on an acetate or I could just print it on white paper and then just trace on a on a piece of transparency uh, uh, clear film uh, just trace the lines using a sharpie pen or something onto a piece of clear film to support my um, uh, uh, photographs and help me photograph things from the correct angle Anyway, we'll talk about that in more detail in the next tutorial.